we did a gig together. We tried to get the rest of you. Of course, we, we tortured him and we had him tied up and uh, in the back of a truck with a car. He still did do it. Jeff, give us a few words about this, man. Come on up here. Come on up here. I'm not, I'm not good on the microphone. I love to talk because I have five kids. I'm used to using my deeper voice. <laughs> and then throw 90 weddings in, you got a really deep voice. So I'm Chef Jeff and it's an honor. It's a great honor to have guests. I'm, I'm living the dream. Ever since I was sixth or fifth grade, I always wanted to feed people and please them well through food. My mom wanted me to be a priest. <laughs> of course, I know it. I found a beautiful lady I fell in love with. 30 years of marriage right now. Five kids. There's nothing better. Thank you. It is, uh, it's so easy to get up to serve customers. I tell you, we haven't raised my prices since I've been in business. I've been in business for nine years now. I spent 28 years working for everybody else. I worked for Mama Vitali when she was 73. I worked for the Greeks. I worked, you know, all over. I've, I've been a chef at the Federal Reserve, counting all your guys' money many years. Uh, I've been at the St. Paul Tell for about seven years, Radisson, just great places. I knew every job has been fantastic, but none better than yourself. Nothing better than working for yourself. So it's so cool. Thank you. Jeff, if all the chicken isn't going, you know, don't forget the McGaggle on the hockey game. I've got to watch the game tomorrow, man. I can surprise the family. Well, let's do this. Um, I know it's a little late, but um, I think that as we start the program portion here of, the, of this um, spectacular lunch, okay, thanks to Jeff, we're going to have the uh, Hoban is the Salute come up, and they're going to lead us in the national anthem. Let me, let, me, let me just say something about the Hoban is the Salute and Carmen Robles and her, and her, and her terrific program. It started with, uh, with some kids at Henry Sidney High School who had, had left the public school in the west side, the Latino American uh, neighborhood, and went to a Sidney High School, more challenging. With, the curriculum was tougher, and they were having a tough time, but thanks to Rob Hansen, he saw the problem and started an opportunity to network with parents. Uh, he got in touch with Carmen Robles, who gave the kids the opportunity to be volunteers. Um, the rest is history. It's a terrific program. They're graduating, they're going to college. It's a program I've been involved with uh, for the past years. So I want to have these terrific kids. Can we, can we come up, kids? We can leave us on a national anthem. Oh, yeah. Go with Pledge of Allegiance. Come on up, folks. Well, I'll sing that one. Well, I think it's a good thing that we stand up if we're going to sing. Oh, yeah. Here and he worked with me 
of my first state senate race back in 2002. And so it's wonderful to see so many folks here like me and my family and Ben and Frank that care very much about this election. It's 389 days away to be exact. But who's counting, right? But you know, we have 389 days among us to make the right things happen. What happens next in our nature, nation's future is not up to the guys in Washington. It's up to everybody here in this room. Yeah. This is the whole concept of self-government. If we don't like what's happening in Washington, we have to expect better results. And that means we're going to have to work for those results because we're going to have to live with them and so will our children, right? And so I came to ask you a really important question. The question is, what if? What if this next election isn't about winning an election, but electing a leader? What if this election isn't about the issues that divide us, but it's about the issues that we agree on? What if we start talking about the things that we can build a consensus around? What happens if the people in Chanhass and on Mission Hills Lane where I live talk to the people who live on Lake Street? If we do, I bet we can actually find a lot of things that we agree on. I'll give you a couple of, I'll give you a couple of examples. Our federal government's budget is $3.8 trillion in 2013. Do you know how much our revenues were? 2.9. That's why we had the shutdown. That's why somebody wants to raise that debt ceiling yet a trillion dollars more because of the overspending. But we all know whether you live on Lake Street or you live on Mission Hills Lane in Chanhassen, we know in our families that we can't spend that way. And we know in our businesses that we can't spend that way. And we know that our economic freedom is at risk every single day with what's happening in Washington, and that's why a change in leadership is needed urgently. Yeah. Urgently, and that's why I'm running for the United States Senate, to say, wait a minute, we can agree on some principles, and we can agree that let's not just win the election, let's send a leader who will bring solutions from Minnesota and actually change what's happening in Washington so we get the government that we deserve. We need a stronger advocate in Washington. We need more Minnesota in Washington and less Washington in Minnesota. We need common sense. And I'd like to think that we could use the common sense of a mom from Chanhassen with four kids. And I'll just share a little story about my mother. My mother is the queen of common sense. I aspire to be like my mother. Uh, she raised seven children. I'm number five of seven in a very strong Irish Catholic family. She and my father were married for 56 years before he passed away a couple of years ago. But she raised seven children, I'm number five, four girls, three, three boys. And I want to tell you that she was not just smart, she had the kind of common sense we need in Washington, D.C. If we went to church on Sunday morning, she was smart enough to know that you separate the kids, right? You keep them like this. Even smarter, the common sense part, she would have three of us sitting in the pew in front of her. Oh. Now that's smart. So she knew how to grab those ears or pinch those arms if we got out of line. And that's what I want in Washington. I want that seat where I can reach everybody. I want to make sure that they respond to common sense. I want to make sure that they hear from Minnesota. I don't want another yes man in Washington like Al Franken. Yeah. He doesn't represent you and me. He's there to vote for President Obama, right? That's why he's there. He was the 60th vote for Obamacare, right? Was that in Minnesota's best interest? Absolutely not. He thought it would be OK to attack Syria. Was that in Minnesota's best interest? It was not in our best interest. He's the chair of the Privacy Committee. He didn't care about the blanket surveillance over our cell phones. Was that in our best interest? No. It wasn't. He voted for every gun control measure offered in the Judiciary Committee. Was that in our best interest? No. No, it wasn't. And he has failed completely to even acknowledge that our $17 trillion debt is a problem. We need real leadership. We need serious leadership. And I can say he's proven one thing, at least to me that the United States Senate seat is not an entry-level position. <laughs> we need real leadership in Washington. It's urgently needed. That's why I'm running for the United States Senate. And that's why I'm here to ask you for your help and your partnership in this. You can join my campaign by going on my website, julianne.mn. 
And there's a video on there, two minutes and 48 seconds, entitled Believe in America. And I ask you all to join me in believing that we are the solution to what's wrong with this nation. And we can take it back by winning this election on November 4th, 2014, and many others. And again, I thank you all for your partnership and for having me here today. Thank you.